It's the Palestinian Authority which forged a pact with Hamas that should be worried about the International Criminal Court. It engaged in war crimes against Israel by firing rockets deliberately aimed at Israeli towns and villages this summer. Israel will do what is necessary to defend its soldiers from this legal offensive being planned by Mr. Abbas. The seemingly never-ending battle between Israel and the Palestinians has recently entered a new arena, the legal one. Both sides prepare to ask the world for assistance in proving the other is guilty of war crimes. This, as a former New York Times reporter, has lit a new controversy comparing Israel to one of the more brutal band of terrorists the world has ever known. Let's welcome to Midpoint, founder of the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund, the former mayor of Shiloh Israel, and author of The Islamic Tsunami, Israel and America in the Age of Obama, David Rubin joins us. Mr. Mayor, good to see you again. Thank you. Good to be with you. What exactly do the Israelis hope to accomplish? And this, I should point out, is a legal group called Shorat Hadin, the Israel Law Center. They filed the lawsuits on Monday. What do they really hope to accomplish in helping to push their side of the story? Well, we, we have a situation here where the Palestinian Authority has been taking repeated steps to bypass Israel rather than negotiating with Israel, rather than making peace, uh, as it were, with Israel. Uh, they're going to international bodies such as the UN, such as the International Criminal Court, and they're, they're trying to uh, delegitimize Israel through those international bodies. Uh, it's a violation of the Oslo Peace Accords. Uh, it's a violation of the principle of negotiation of, of peace, and uh, obviously they don't want that. Uh, so there, there are certain steps that Israel can take in response to that. With regard to all of the different occurrences, if you will, the war, the battles, the missiles being thrown back and forth, why, in your opinion, does there continue to then be, from members of the United Nations and other countries, including some people even in the United States, who have a backlash against Israel? who say that Israel is the one helping to push this forward, and it is Israel who doesn't want peace. You know that you hear that constantly. Of course. The, uh, you know, I, I would need a, a two-hour program if we were to really cover uh, the issue of, of anti-Semitism and uh, resentment of the Jewish people and resentment of the whole concept of the chosen people. And... Uh, well, let's you just know, make it, I'll tell you what, let's make it 90 seconds here before we take a break, and I'll make it simple then. In your opinion and the opinion then of Israel, is it just as easy to say that the reason why there are people here who don't see Israel trying to protect themselves is because those people hate Jews? Uh, well, I think in some cases you certainly could say that. You certainly could say that regarding the Palestinian Authority. Uh, you certainly could say that regarding the Arab countries. And... Uh, a, a lot of the other countries that are siding with the Arab countries, which are which are doing it simply because of oil money and their concerns that they're, they're going to uh, lose the affection of the Arab world, uh, or, or perhaps that they're going to uh, be afflicted with terrorism, as Israel is. When we talk about the United Nations, and there are many people who say the United Nations does very little when it comes down to this, and does very little in a lot of instances, but is, would it be your opinion and the people in Israel that there's a lot of countries and a lot of people at the United Nations right now who would sleep a whole lot easier if Israel was gone? Well, I think, uh, I, I think we should examine the United Nations as, a, as an international body. Uh, the United Nations, uh, during the war in Gaza, the United Nations was uh, looking the other way when there were missiles being planted by the Palestinian Authority, by the Hamas and Fatah terrorist organizations that comprise the Palestinian Authority. Missiles were being planted in those UN-supervised schools. Now, I, I would really like to know how the UN did not know that there were missiles inside schools. Now, I, I've been in schools. Okay, I'm going to ask you to hold that for one second here, Mayor Rubin, because you've just hit on a point that I want to touch on, but we have to take a break. We're going to return after the break. We're going to address also comparisons being made between Israel and ISIS. Welcome back to Midpoint. The former mayor of Shiloh, Israel, and blogger for IsraelNationalNews.com, David Rubin. 
All right, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to get back to what you said here just before we took a break about missiles being placed in U.N. compounds, U.N. overseen compounds. I mean, we have, of course, heard all these stories before. These are really nothing new. So then why does this continue to be an issue that countries like America, England, others do not actually hammer down on, stop this from happening? It would seem there has to be an allowance to continue to allow this to happen. Somebody's letting somebody get away with this. Well, I think, as, as you know, uh, I'm, I'm the head of the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund. And what one of the things that we do is we put playgrounds in schools. We build playgrounds for children. Uh, and, and when we build a playground in a school, there is no way and I'm telling you, I've visited many schools in, in the course of my work. There is no way that you can have a, have a playground in a school and have missiles hidden in that playground or in that schoolyard, and nobody's going to know about it. Uh, the, the heads of the school are going to know about it. I'm going to know about it. The parents are going to know about it. It's not possible. Uh, so someone is being disingenuous here, and I, I believe that it's the U.N., uh, the, I, I think that, you know, people don't like to say it, but uh, I think that the UN is run by a bunch of dishonest people who, who are allowing their hatred of Israel to get in the way of, of truth. And I, I think uh, that the International Criminal Court should hear about that, not about anything that Israel might be doing. Simply anti-Semites then at the United Nations? Absolutely. All right. I need to ask you about this story that was written by Chris Hedges. He's a former New York Times correspondent. He wrote a story called ISIS, the new Israel. And he compares ISIS to Israel, saying that ISIS pursuit of ethnic purity is similar to the goal of the founders of Israel. First, I get your reaction to that. Second of all, your reaction to the fact that there are many people who believe exactly what he said. Well, you know, I think we could also compare Adolf Hitler to Mother Teresa. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it, it wouldn't be honest, and it, and it, it, it truly would be uh, a, a scandalous thing to say, right? But uh, everyone would agree with that. Uh, you cannot compare Adolf Hitler and Mother Teresa. Well, I think that we're not too far uh, from that comparison if you're comparing ISIS to Israel. ISIS, of course, is the antithesis of Israel. ISIS believes in jihad. ISIS acts on jihad. ISIS beheads uh, people by the thousands. Uh, I, I defy anyone in the Arab world, in the Islamic world, to tell me one time that Israel has beheaded anybody. Uh, but I can point to many cases in the Islamic world, including conservative so-called friends of the Western world, such as Saudi Arabia, where beheadings are done every day. I only have a few seconds left. Benjamin Netanyahu has ordered the withholding of Palestinian tax revenues. Even the president of Israel and the United States president has criticized this move, saying that it is inflammatory and it pushes forward potential violence. Your thoughts? Well, unfortunately, the president of Israel, which is a ceremonial post, as you may know, uh, has a personal rivalry with the prime minister. I'm not going to get into that issue right now. Uh, but uh, I think it's a minimal thing that could be done. Uh, the Palestinian Authority owes billions, and I, I stress billions of dollars, to the Israel Electric Company uh, for electrical services that have been provided over the past few years. Uh, they refuse to pay it. Uh, they think that they're entitled to everything. And this entitlement mentality of the Palestinian Authority is the real problem here. All right, we're going to have to stop it there because we are unfortunately all out of time. David Rubin, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Very happy New Year. Stay safe. We'll look forward to talking again. Thank you. Happy New Year. Take care. Third hour on Midpoint, a not-so-subtle warning from the president of Afghanistan, a somewhat shocking medical revelation about younger people and strokes. And here's something that you have to set the clock for. Our first 2015 edition of the Water Cooler. Please buckle up. It's all coming up right here on Midpoint.